who are watching online to worship right where you are with us and those in the lobby, come on in. Today is going to be an amazing day. We're going to give God the glory, the honor that he is due. Amen. Amen. Jesus. 
just worship you. We pour out our hearts and our lives. We pour it all out, Lord. And we pray that you fill us with the fire of the Holy Ghost.
a moment. He is the way maker for you today. I just want you to see, everyone in here today, it's always that way. There's something, there's a prayer request you have before the throne of God. And you are waiting on Him, you are believing God. He has made the way. He has made the way for you. I want you to see with the eye of faith the path from you to that answer right now. There is a path, and He has created it. He is the way maker. He is the promise keeper. That is who He is. And He is that for us today. Each one of us as individuals, He has made the way for us. So Lord, we just thank you. We see with the eye of faith that miracle taking place, that promise being kept, that answer on the way. We see it right now in the name of Jesus and we receive it by faith. Just reach up and just receive it by faith and see yourself walk into that answer. And Lord, we just thank you for doing it in Jesus' name. And if that's your prayer, just say amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's a way maker. Hallelujah. So good to be in the house of God. So good to be with family, isn't it? Before you're seated, turn and greet one another and welcome each other into the house. Amen. love to know about your visit with us here today in the seat pocket in front of you there is a green card that says new here on it um, you can take that out and put your information on there you can scan that QR code and just put it into your phone that way we'll know that you are with us here today but please stop outside the first time guest tent right after service today we have a gift we want to give you and we would love to meet you as well Amen. I just have a couple of quick announcements. Number one, don't forget to look at your bulletin. There's stuff on there. There is stuff on the front of the bulletin. And all of the regular weekly services is on the back of the bulletin. If you ever wonder when, what's happening every week at World Harvest, just turn your bulletin over. It's right there. Um, we do have um, a lot of Revival services, pastor's going to be talking about that, and prayer meetings this month of September, the Holy Days of Fire, are taking place right now at World Harvest. Um, we do, we did change, we did change the pastors 100. It's not this Saturday, the 17th. We have, we have, we're going to be putting that off to the next month because of all the other prayer meetings. Just want you to know that so you won't show up here at noon on Saturday. Um, the Roswell Day of Hope is taking place in September. And what that is, is there's a group of churches in Roswell, and they're a coalition called Hope Roswell. And every year they do one main event. It's over at Roswell City Hall, and we take place in that event. If you would like to help with that event, you can go to our church center or go to the Roswell Day of Hope website. We do, personally, our church sponsors the, the Kids Zone. We always do the kids zone you can help in that area or you can help in the prayer tent or some of the other things that take place but um, be a part of that day um, we'll be over there that day um, leaders we have our annual planning coming up woo -woo. planning 2023 can you believe it let that sink in 2023 is just around the corner so um, the last Friday night of this month we will have our annual planning for leadership put that on your calendar and last but not least, we want you to also reserve the date 
for the Missions Gala that is coming up. It is one of the most fun events that we do every year. It is kind of our, our kingpin event for our two weeks of missions. You can now go to Church Center and purchase your tickets for that. It is November the 4th. It's a Friday night, and we have a little recap from last year so you can see how much fun it is. Go ahead. the Lord. We believe in applying our energy, our passion, and our love for Jesus to the outside world. There's one of the announcements I need to make uh, on the 17th of September uh, from 10 to 2, downtown with Bishop Michael Kenyon in the five colleges down there. They got Hope uh, 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 Spellman, Morehouse, uh, Morris Brown, uh, Atlanta. What's the other one? It's... but. I think one merch, Spellman. But anyway, he has an outreach, and we want to be part of that. Amen. For those who want to go down there. Amen. With Bishop Michael Kenyon. Well, I want to say this. I want to say thank you to all the people that made this last encounter so special. I want to start off with Pastor Willie and Flossie Russell. That really amazing. Both you guys. Thank you. Uh, I thank God for my wife, Pastor Linda, did many, uh, much ministry. But, but, but the, four, the, the foursome that pulled it together was uh, Grace Houghton, yeah. Bonnie Tilly, yeah. uh, we had uh, 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 Rochelle Fox, and Sarah Kettner. If you're here, and who else? And oh, Hannah, you're here, yeah. You weren't here last night because they were here. And Hannah, would you please stand up? All these people, they did an amazing job. Amazing. It takes about 75 people to pull it off. And if you've been to the encounter, you know it's so, it seems to flow seamlessly because there's a lot of people. And we may be calm on the outside. We're like a duck on top of the water. We're just gliding across the water. But underneath, our feet are going 90 miles an hour to pull it all together. But we have some people who want to just share their testimony. Antoine, come on up here. You've got a testimony. Give me the microphone. You've got, I've got several. Actually, I've got... Um, uh, if while you're up here, I'm going to just pull them all together here. We'll just go through these uh, while I'm, I'm looking at Beth Ann. Where are you? Come back up here. And the other person I'm going to think was uh, Fare. Come on up here. And uh, I think there was uh, Terry Lynn. Where are you? Come on up here. All right. Give them a hand as they come. All right. Now, listen. I, all these had, they actually came to me. said, so we got testers. So we're going to make this. It's going to be on point. What happened? Come up here. Yes, sir. Something is memorable about this day. Yes, sir. Uh, and why don't you share with people where you were and where you are. Oh, awesome. Okay, great. Uh, this is all freestyle. I ain't wrote nothing down. Let me just keep it real with you. First and foremost. Wait, first of all, we love you. You are I cool. I love you, too. You are cool <laughs> with your bling and everything. I love you. Hey, I, I wouldn't have had this without Christ Jesus. I'd have sold this a long time ago. 35 years of drug and alcohol addiction. Gone when I was at the encounter. Come on, man. Come on. Huh? Yeah. Let's just keep it real. Huh? Somebody better touch somebody and say, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Huh? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, you know, I believe God's going to use you to preach. I, I know it's in you. Hallelujah. I tell you. Oh. I'm just getting, I got, I know y'all pressed for time, but Lord have mercy, I got to say this. There was no way, there was no hope when I was sitting in this pews wishing that God would do something for me. But it was until I gave myself, I said, Father God, I can't do this without you. I can't make it on this journey without you. 
Hallelujah. The encounter came. I said, Lord, how am I gonna make it to the encounter? Every month, every dime I make going to bills. Hallelujah. He made a way. Okay, but come on now, let me give you the real deal. The real deal was when I stepped off the bus at the motel for the encounter. I said, Lord, I'm looking for something. I'm looking for you, Father God. I need you. Hallelujah. He hit me. He hit me so hard. And he told me, he said, son, I got you. Hallelujah. Just put all your trust in me. Glory to God. Listen, now it gets better than that there. Hallelujah. I'm sitting down with Pastor Willie. Hallelujah. Pastor Willie say, what's binding y'all? What's hindering y'all from getting what God has. Oh, Lord, have mercy. It's fornication. Mm -mm -mm. Somebody better say it. He was riding me with that fornication. Lord knows I was doing the best I could, but the lust was still in me. I, I said, Pastor Willie, it's the fornication. Pastor Willie say, we can fix that. That's hallelujah. Hey, hey, listen, 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 listen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus, I had one of the most beautiful weddings that this church has ever seen for free. Thank you, Jesus. He just moved in a mighty way because I went to the encounter and I depended on him, nobody else. And I just want to thank World Hall Church. I'm here to tell you, all these front row people, Jesus Christ, I wouldn't be nothing without you. Thank you, Jesus. World Hall Church. Amen. I just want to say I love you and thank you for this beautiful year. <laughs> Let's give Jesus a shout of praise. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, Fari, come over here. Let's bring the Zimbabwe flavor here. Yes. <laughs> you went to the encounter. Yes, I did. What happened? Encounter, encounter, encounter. You know, I looked up the word encounter. Encounter means to meet up, to go, to engage. So what it does, it's like Moses, when he went up the mountain uh -huh. and he meets God, you get transformed. And when you're transformed, I tell you, uh, you are never the same. You come down with fire, you get in the fire, you get out with fire. So the next word which God gave me after encounter is confrontation. You see, at the encounter, we are taught that uh, we're getting back what was stolen. That's it. We're getting back what the enemy took from us. Yeah. We're getting back who we are. We're getting back lost identity. Yeah. Yes. That's what the encounter is all about. Yes. So... The next thing is confrontation. Everything that was stolen, we're getting it back. Woo! You know what? I have watched this man change week after week. But this encounter is going to catapult you to a whole new man of God. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And you know what? He's from Zimbabwe. I said, we're going back to Zimbabwe with the fire of God in his life. And he's yes. going to touch his people. It's going to happen. Yes. yes. We're so proud of you. Yes. yes Give him a hand. Praise the Lord. He praise you, Lord. It's wonderful. Okay, Beth Ann, help us. Well, two things. What happened for me at Encounter and what happened to my family while I was away was incredible. So um, for me, I had left the church. I was saved when I was 12. And um, I guess I'm just going to be real honest. Be honest. Second, because like this might help someone. I uh, was on fire for God, and I was running the race. My goal uh, when I was 16 was to go to a Bible college and then go to China to be a missionary, like Come the on. hardest missionary field out there. And um, I got angry at my pastor for something that had happened, 
and I started going to a Methodist church instead of the Pentecostal church that I was in uh, my senior year of high school. And everything was good for a while, and then I started dating someone. A Methodist. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, this, this is the part that's kind of hard to say, so y'all bear with me. This is embarrassing. I'm laying myself out, okay? <sighs> Thank you. <laughs> um, I remember sitting in about the fourth row. I was still so committed. I remember sitting there, and I remember praying, and I remember saying to God, God, I know it's wrong, and I know it's against your will and against your word, but I want to have sex with my boyfriend. And when I did that, he said, okay. And slowly but surely, the anointing fell off of my life. I hadn't even done it yet, but I purposed in my heart to disobey what I knew was right. And that is what broke the connection that I had. And um, from that moment, I didn't realize that something attached to me. Uh huh. Something attached a to passenger. me. A passenger. A passenger. And that passenger ruled my life for the next decade and ruined relationship after relationship. I ended up with two children out of wedlock and I'm so grateful for my children because that was God turning things to good. And with my second child, um, I was abandoned. I was completely abandoned. It was during the pandemic so I couldn't even see my family. And I remember just sitting, in, I would get in the bathtub so my other child wouldn't see me and I would just cry. And I would just cry to God with my big old belly. <laughs> and I said, Lord, I don't know how I got so far from you, but I just need a hug. And all the comfort that I had found with men was a false comfort. And in that moment, I felt, no joke, I felt a physical embrace around me. Oh, Jesus, you're so and that set me on my journey back. Jesus, I'm the one. I'm the one that he came out. He left the 99 and came out to get me. He found me. Come on, Jesus. Come everywhere on, Jesus. I looked, I was seeking in all different directions. And everywhere I looked, Jesus popped up. I was like, what? I left you behind a long time ago. I'm looking, I'm looking over here. I'm looking over there. I got my meditation practice going. I'm, I'm reading the Bhagavad Gita. I mean, but everywhere, even in those things, I heard his voice and he was calling me back. And so what Encounter did for me personally is that I had some words spoken over me and felt it in my spirit as well, that all those years were not wasted. They were not lost. I was not lost. He knew where I was the whole time. And he had a purpose and a plan. And I think I know some of why I experienced what I did. My hope is to be in counseling, Christian counseling, and help people through their issues. Amen. I believe that maybe if I had stayed in the church and had lived that clean, holy life, I wouldn't maybe be able to relate to the people that I want to help. And so all of that tragedy, God turned it to good. Come on. And he was working it that way the whole time. I just didn't realize it. So that's part one of my testimony. Encounter has renewed the fire that I had when I was a child. Thank you, Jesus. It broke demons off of me that yes, I did not Jesus. know were there. Part two. I won't get into it, but there was a moment when we were asked to think of three people that we could witness to about Jesus. Well, when I came back to God, I cut everybody on my life. So church people and my family is all I know. And I sat there for forever trying to think of somebody. And then it was like, duh, I wrote my siblings down. I'm the oldest of five. When I first came back to God, I testified to, to in my mother's church that it was her holding space for me and praying me for me that brought me back. Yes. And I didn't realize it at the time, but I prophesied <laughs> that I was the first domino and the rest of them would fall. Come on, Jesus. Come on, Bethan. I did not know how truly I was speaking because when we wrote those names down, I wrote my siblings down. The exact moment that that was occurring, my brother, who's probably the second furthest out that I was like, how am I even going to talk to him about this? He got saved. Hallelujah. And when I got back here, my mom was here. And the first thing she said to me was, you'll never believe this, but Bradley got saved last night. Hallelujah, Jesus. It is powerful 
y'all, you have to go. I'm telling you. Because I thought I had dealt, like, I was working on my stuff. I'm, like, dragging out my psychology and my traumas. And I'm like, okay, we're going to figure all this out. No. It's not going to happen. It's not. Don't lie to yourself. You need him. Yes. Bethan, can I say this? Your testimony blesses me. You know what? There's several reasons. Number one, her honesty is refreshing. Thank you for sharing but number two, you mom and dads have got kids that are out there. Do you see what the faithful praying of a mother will do? Here's Beth. I'm tell you, I feel sorry for the devil. You're going, to, you're going to take the stick the devil beat you with and beat him with it. I'll tell you what. We are so happy for you. We're proud of you. And we want to be a great family. You're going to grow and do mighty things for God. May I say one more thing? When I first started coming to church here, it was kind of hilarious. And I've told some of you this. I thought, I'm a homeschool mom, so I thought, okay, my daughter's really bored. She needs to interact. I guess I'll take her to a church. That way she can know some good people. And I sat in the back, and I was like, I'm just going to sit here and have my little personal journey with Jesus. I don't need to get into the church or anything like that. I can do my little thing right here. But bit by bit, I found myself just suddenly, I've signed up for the Bible class. And then all of a sudden, I'm on church center, like, or I'm walking up to people like, how can I help? And um, I was looking at myself like, didn't you just say last week you got this over here on your own? Um, but it, being drawn into the body, being discipled in this church, you need that. You need it. Come you may on. not know that you do, but you need yes, it. You Ask do. for it. Find someone and get this. <laughs> Amen. Come on. Praise the Lord. You're a miracle working God. You got, you got a mic? You're a miracle working God. You're a miracle working God. You're the Alpha and Omega. You're a miracle working God. You're a miracle working God. Okay, so, so okay, go ahead. You're the Alpha and Omega. You're a miracle working God. Now listen. They say I have the wrong key, but I enjoy myself. Listen, come here. <laughs> All right. What is your testimony? This is Terry Lynn. Hi, everyone. At first, I'm trying to figure out how I ended up last, because after following all that. <laughs> but I'm thankful. Encounter was awesome. And I have to say, God is a way maker. He is, he is changing so many things in my life. But... Encounter for me was an experience like no other. I walked in there shy, timid, fearful, and God just did a work in me. I was able to cast off those spirits and realize who I really was. And now I'm walking out, walking out a woman in spiritual authority. <laughs> That's amazing. Yes. God is good. God is good. You know, I have watched you keep coming, coming, coming. I've watched you like come out of darkness into more and more light. Now you've stepped in the full light. Watch what God does for you and your family. We love you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, oh, you're not done? Oh. And God, you know, during that experience, he showed me something. I, you know how you know God loves you, but you, you just kind of know it. But it's not really real, real to you. Like, you want to feel it. Because, you know, in physical feel, love, you could feel, I mean, well, the world's love. You could feel the affection and all of that. But, you know, it's always kind of a distance. But during encounter, he actually allowed me to feel his love. I felt his arms around me. I felt all those things I felt I was missing before. And it has changed me. And I was already on cloud nine. I was just so happy when I came in here. And when I came in, I saw something I never thought that I would see. My husband, who said he would never even step foot in this building, was here to greet me when I came back from encounter. And that's only the start, because I know God is doing something in my family. Hallelujah. Your family saved. Yes. Dangerous ground he came on. He's touched with the power. Yes. We love you much. Come on, give all these people a hand. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Grace. 
You're too persnickety. You're a miracle working God. You're a miracle working God. You're the Alpha and Omega. You're a miracle working God. You're a miracle working God. You're a miracle working God. This is Brother King. I've known King since God made Georgia red clay. It's been a while. The counter was great for you. Yes, it was. I went home last night and <laughs> prayed. And this morning, God was talking about overflowing. And when I was sitting down, I was, God said, hold your hands up. I want overflowed. You know, when we Lift our hands and praise. God want to pour out a greater anointing. Yes. And I told God that night, I said, I appreciate both men of God, and I appreciate my mom, which is your wife. Oh, yeah, I know what you mean. You know, mom, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I'm flowing. <laughs> so I said, God, I thank Pastor Willie, too. Hey, he just encouraged me too, Pastor. Thank you. And I thank you for your wife too. He didn't, he came out, checked on me. He said, King, you okay? I said, Yeah, I'm okay. So that happened. The enemy was saying, I'm going to make sure you go home. I said, I'm not going home. I sit in the chair and I was weeping. And I said, God, you didn't bring me this far to just let me go. And some said, I, I haven't gave up on you yet. I got work for you to do. And I said, I'm not leaving yet, devil. Got to understand, you don't try that four times. And it failed. I'm still here. Not because of me, because of God. Because of what God is feeling about to do. I'm ready, willing, able to take what God is fine about to do. I want the will of the Lord to be done in my life. It's not about King. It's about God. When you get to know God, when you really get to know God, when you drop on your knees, I don't care who leaves you, you gotta know God. That's one thing about it. I said, God, I wanna get to know you. I ain't finna leave the same no more. I didn't come to the encounter to be the same. I wanna lead different than I ever been before. God, you gotta fill me up. I said, I ain't leaving this place. Pastor, gotta pray for me. I'm not giving up yet because God got a plan. And you better get in that plan of God. Get closer to God. But this ain't no plan time no more. We are in a war. Like Pastor been saying for a so long time. We are called warriors of God kingdom. I am a warrior. And I told my wife, Things don't change for me. I'm not the same man that I just came from the encounter with God. I walked in there with a brand new attitude. And I went there praying. I said, TV, bye-bye. Bye-bye, <laughs> Facebook. Bye-bye, <laughs> social media. I got to spend more time. I feel 
like celebrating. That's a powerful testimony. Come on, great. I feel like praising him. I feel, I feel like, like praising, praising him. him. I feel like praising him. him. sit down if you can we got a little surprise because I want to show you I want to take you back to a Wednesday sermon and I was preaching on faith remember that roll that thing what things have you desired what's that what do you what do you need king you need a car you need a car so here's how it goes king I king desire a car. He took out what, what kind of car? Right down the size of the motor. I want to... I know he's begging for a car. And pick the car. They may want a truck. Maybe you need a truck so you can work stuff. Move people. Get some money using a truck. Amen? But I came. I desire a truck. I get this. What things, I, what, what things do I desire when I pray? So, Lord, I'm, and I'll get this. I'll make it a hundred times prayer. One time. Father, I'm asking for a truck in Jesus' name. I, I'll tell you, this is going to work. Do you want a truck? Okay. Before God and everybody, you're going to pray this prayer. I'm going to just follow me. Say, Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, I desire a truck. I desire a truck. Now, talk in the mic like you mean it, like bold. Say, Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, I desire a truck. I desire a truck. And according to Mark eleven twenty four, according to Mark eleven twenty four, that what things whatever I desire, whatever I desire, when I pray, when I pray, I believe, I believe that I receive it. I receive it in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. So I'm asking. You, Father, I'm asking you, Father, send me a truck. Send me a truck in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, I believe you've heard me. I believe you heard me, and I believe I receive my truck. I re- believe I receive my truck. And from this moment on, and from this moment, I'm on, thanking you for my truck. I'm thanking you for my truck. Thank you for my truck, Father. Thank you for my truck. It's my truck, Lord. It's, it's my truck. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Watch what God does. Yes. Amen. Now listen to me. Everybody said amen. Amen. Now he came to me week after week with, I mean, he's not fully employed yet. So here's money, hundreds of dollars. This is sowing for the kingdom of God. I'm sowing. Every week he'd come. I'm sowing. And he said, I have a truck. I have a truck. I'm going, Lord, make this work. I I have a truck. I have a truck. I have a truck. I have a truck. Drum roll. 
Turn on the screen over there. I tell you what, God, God has given you a truck. Okay, turn that thing on. Turn that thing on outside. I need the remote. Is it out there? Oh, the remote died. The remote's not working. And my son's in charge. My God, that's a fail. But that's all right. I want you to, I want you to know this. Somebody gave you a 2017 black, gorgeous truck. We have the title, you can sign it, and it's yours. You can have it. And now, brother, that's amazing. About six, eight weeks ago, you were confessing for a truck right there. That's the zone right there. If you want a, you want a truck, get right there. But, but what happens is God speaks to people. You know, he says, someone speaks to people and say, God says, I want you to give them your truck. Now, I don't want to know. I've, God says, we, and this person does not want to be known. Isn't that amazing? So, I want to say this to you. Hey, put it on this screen. Put it on the big screen. Put it on the big screen. Put it on the big screen. Watch it now, it's coming. Put it on the big screen. Come on, guys, you can do it. You can do it. We will wait till you get it figured out. There it is. Look at that truck. Man, oh, man, oh, man. Is this exciting? You know, I, I want to I tell you something. I want to tell you this. It pays to come to church. Lord, let this truck be useful for business, for transportation, and may this preacher be loosed to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. He's overcome. He's overcome. He's overcome. He's overcome. Oh, my, my, my. Well, you know what? You know what? It's just the beginning. Get ready. Let me help you to the stairs. Oh, give one more shout to the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Well, someone said, I thought we were supposed to have a sermon, all this stuff. Listen, this is church. This is church. This is, this is people being changed by the power of God. And the Bible says, don't get jealous. Rejoice. 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 Oscar, pass to Oscar. Take him out there and show him his truck. Show him his truck. All right, let's give him a hand as he goes. Hallelujah. Now come back to service. Don't drive off just yet. Just. That is so fun. That is a nice truck. That ain't no junker. Ooh, gotta get the, gotta get the style. Get the shades. I have a dear friend in Africa, and I love Africa. His name is Pastor Robert Kayenja. I've known him since 1990s. 
three. And he's one of the leading pastors in the African continent. He knows like half of the presidents of the countries in Africa. And uh, he has the biggest church building in East Africa. And uh, he has like 1,500 churches. He's huge. He has a service every day. This is his seventh year. Service every day. A short service is six hours. A long is 12. I've been there many, many times. Oh, there he is in shock. <laughs> He's still crying. He's still crying. <laughs> <laughs> he's checking it out. He's gonna kick. He's gonna. He's gonna. <laughs> okay, that's what you get for sewing. I tell you, that guy sewed hundreds. Uh, I mean, God moves on people. You say, well, I, I don't want a truck. I want a Mercedes. We'll start sewing thousands. Amen. <laughs> uh, uh, but Pastor Robert Kayenja has a one square mile farm in the middle of Uganda. He bought years ago and he farms it. Every, he keeps cutting back. It was a virgin farm and he produces all kinds of produce. But in northeast Uganda, also bordering southeast Sudan, there's like a famine going on. And I've been seeing it come week after week. It's been several months now. But I felt really impressed that we should do something about it because literally people are starving to death. And I was with a, on a plane back from Zambia. I talked to a World Vision executive. And I, he explained to me how it works. World Vision is the largest Christian organization in the country. There's like over half a billion a year. But they'll find needs, and then they'll find sponsors, and they marry them for two, three, four, five years. That's how it works. So I said, I want to marry you with this, because he wasn't very much aware. But Pastor Robert, let's go listen to what he has to say. Hello, my fellow countrymen. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Robert Kayanja. Probably by now you are aware, or you might have heard about shortages of food and starvation and failed crops. For us, it has hit us in the area of Karamoja. So sisters and brothers there are reduced to eating leaves, some of them. Thanks to the government and good Samaritans like you, we've been responding positively, but the need is massive. They need all kinds of help and all kinds of food. And donate as much as you can to save our brothers and sisters who are going through the tough times right now in Karamoja. Not only food substance is needed, but beds and mattresses and all kinds of stuff. We, we can't wait anymore. Saints, I want to really assure you, the situation in Karamoja is not good at all. We need to help Karamoja. Karamoja needs help. I told you the other day, feeding has never been the work of government. It's the work of the church. Jesus clearly talked about to Simon Peter, he said, feed my flock when he rose from the dead. Jesus, we thank you. As these your servants are traveling, you give them safety and uh, the whole team as they are going, be with them, strengthen them and uh, protect them in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen and amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Those sacks you see, he's actually formed his own, uh, that's ground, uh, raised, ground up put it in these sacks and he's got sunflower seeds all kind of nuts he puts it all together he puts a uh, mixture which is fully sustainable just that bag alone and they're literally I spared you the worst pictures and I'm not one I know America gets a lot of pictures of starving people I understand that but I'm not this is someone I know he was very legit and he's doing it now for weeks and weeks and this came this week he said anybody you can do anything and I'm, gonna, I'm like a person like, I was in South Africa and I bought something at the tourist thing for my wife and kids. And then I went by this little kind of, it's not a mission house per se, but I'm sure you've seen it in Joburg. It's stopping mosquitoes from hurting kids. Because I have, an aunt, I have a cousin who's a doctor. She's been in Uganda for 20 years. She sees 20,000 kids a year. 
and she has a, a staff of 12. She funds the whole thing herself. And I personally have been there and seen what these little insects do to people and how they hurt the little ones big time, deform them, kill them. And so I remember I, I, when she was talking about it, I've seen this lady. I felt, you know, I got a match or more. What I just bought, I got a match more than what I just paid. You know what I'm saying? It's only right. And so when I see all this going on, and I'm connected to Pastor Robert, so I'm no longer blind to what's going on. I know what's going on. It's also affected Northwest Kenya. Or have I heard some of that today? But we're going to do something. So the missions today goes to Pastor Robert. Whatever comes in today, we're going to give to him. And I want to call up. I said, we were touched. We saw. And we're going to help. We did it with Uganda. When, not Uganda. Uh, Ukraine. Ukraine. We, said, we, gave ten, we gave a lot of money to Ukraine. And we helped them. And so this is, a, this is a need. And we have a lot of missions projects we could call out. We get this. We got tons of stuff going on. But I felt led in my heart to do this. So what is this? We're taking the offering? No. Yes, we are. But we're going to do it to combined tithes and offerings. Let your offering go to missions. This is a mission Sunday. Once a month, we have a mission Sunday. On purpose, we give to the things of God. Now, if you already pledged money, which is great, we thank God. We'll apportion that towards Uganda if you're on a monthly pledge. But for those who are not, we are going to see, I want to see this knocked in the head. And let's pray. This family is for four years, no rain, and people are starving to death. I'm believing God to be broken. We can put our faith together. Are you with me? Yes. Let's pray. Father, we do pray for Uganda. We do pray for Pastor Robert. We pray for that northeast sector of Uganda, as well as south uh, east uh, some, uh, Sudan, southern Sudan. We believe in Jesus' name. We curse that drought. We command it to be broken. We command the heavens to open. And Lord, we are calling forth the food and all the supplies necessary to sustain it. And Lord, let the gospel be preached. Because I know Pastor Robert, the gospel shall be preached. The healing power shall be released. And there'll be restoration where there's been devastation. In Jesus' mighty name. If you agree with that, say amen. amen. So now we're going to receive our tithes and offerings. We're going to give it unto the Lord. Lord, bless you as you give. You can give online through this the, uh, mobile giving app. Or you come forward with your physical tithe. Or both. In Jesus' name. away it goes into your life up ahead the seed that leaves my hand what's the rest of that honey the seed that leaves my hand really uh, never leaves my life God will bless it like he said Mike Murdoch song hallelujah hey Jack Hey, Brother Chris, your wife is at the encounter. Yes, sir. She was touched with the power of God. Lord, we thank you for Chris, that he's agile. He can run up and down the stairs. <laughs> Lord, Lord, this is miracle ground. The ground of tithes and offerings is miracle ground. As you multiplied the fish, you multiplied the bread, multiply this which is sown. Let every household prosper and have divine increase upon it. In Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I wish I could get everybody's testimony, but we'll get it in due time for the encounter. There's so many things. 
I just see Kim Owens just came back from Raleigh. She was up there with the team. And uh, when we were in Raleigh about a year ago, they saw a street reach truck. And so we, we make a long story short, they now have their own street reach truck and they launched their own street reach this weekend. Give Kim a hand. We appreciate you, Kim. I'm sure it was exciting. You know, I got to thinking about it. You remember Prophet Dick Mills stood up here and he said, this church will have a, f- uh, would affect five states around it. And that is literally what's happened. The states around us were affecting through crusades, revivals, street reach, outreaches. It's just a fun thing to watch the word of God come to pass. Let's go to Matthew 3, 11 through 12, and I want to talk today about days of holy fire, and it's all about the fire. Say, it's all about the fire. fire. And I want to just read and ask God to make it fresh and alive to us. In Matthew 11, we're going to begin reading. It says, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he who is coming after me is mightier than I. Whose sandals I'm not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. Everybody say fire. fire. Say fire real loud. Fire. fire. Yes. I feel it right there. His winnowing fan is in his hand. And he will thoroughly clean out his threshing floor and garner and gather his wheat into the barn. But he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. Father, I pray right now in Jesus' mighty name. That by the power of the Holy Spirit, your fire would fall on this congregation. Even as the word is preached, let the fire fall. Lord, let the, let the fire be on the word, be on the teaching, be on the vessel, be on me, be on the vessel's hearing. Let fire fall in Jesus' name. Let the power of God be made manifest. And let us enter into these days with an open heart. And may you do a work of transformation in the name of Jesus. Amen. John the Baptist baptized people in water. John the Baptist was the first Baptist. He baptized his people in the cool waters of Jordan. Jesus came with a different baptism. He baptized his people in the river of liquid fire. One, you're immersed in water. The second, you're immersed in fire. Not just any fire, holy fire. Spiritual fire. Hallelujah. But this gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ is an incendiary gospel. What does that mean? It causes fires. I mean, there's only about the preaching of Jesus that you're either for him or against him. You know how Jesus... I tell you, it's a dividing line. And in the workplace, you start preaching about Jesus. If they don't have the Holy Ghost in them, they'll try to shut you up. I just shared last week, I was in a plane to Zambia. And I just mentioned Jesus. One sentence. (laughs) One sentence. And there was a, the, the, the plane got tore up. We had stewardesses running around. I was asked to leave. Oh yeah, I'm gonna leave. Where am I gonna go? The plane's in the air. You need to change seats. I'm not changing my seat. Just because you guys are Fruit Loops, don't make me a Fruit Loop. I said, you said one word about heaven. Where will you go? I said, if this plane was to crash and end up in a ball of fire, where would you go? I remember I was in the back of a plane with my wife. Remember this, honey? And it was a very rocky ride. And I was sharing with this person about God and about heaven and about if this plane were to crash and Jesus helped me out. I no sooner said that than this plane. Now, I've ridden thousands of planes, but this plane went on a ride. You remember that? We dropped like 50 feet. Whoa, everyone flying. Boom. And then it went tight, tight. Boom. Then up. Boom. Absolute silence on the plane. No one's saying a thing. I'm serious. Boom! Whoa, like this. And so we got quiet. So I just carried on where I was. So like I was saying. 
and I just stalled. The people in front of me, two rows, the ones on the left, they all turn around. Tell us, tell us, I'm serious. What's the answer? I am not kidding. Tell us, tell us. It was such a great scenario. Ladies and gentlemen, let me share how you go to heaven. I mean, they, I mean, it was the greatest thing. I got to share the gospel. But let me say something. Jesus will shake up the place wherever he goes. Let me say something. If Jesus touches you, then his fire will be on your life. But I don't have any fire because you've never, never really been touched. Religion. Religion. People get their degrees. Nothing wrong with a degree. My dad had all kinds of degrees. My dad would read his Bible in Greek. But degrees don't make it. So we have people, they talk out of their head. You know why it's only an hour? You can only take an hour. I mean, it's like torture. My God, you sing three hymns in a hurry, here, wah, 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 you want to leave. Listen, I want to leave. I just got to get out of here. Because the ways of God are not the ways of man. Remember that when Jesus rebuked Peter, Matthew 16, 23? Jesus was telling them where he would have to go to die, and Peter was trying to tell him, but not you. You're supposed to be couch potato. He said, no, no, no. He said, you're an offense to me because you know why? You're not mindful of the things of God, but you're mindful of the things of men. See, that's the difference. Men operate through the intellect. Now, God's got a smart mind. God's the smartest mind in the universe, but he operates by his spirit. See, when you're born again, your head was left alone. You still carry, you can be born again, but you still got the same stupid head. When it comes to things of the spirit. But your spirit's been remade. And God operates by spiritual forces. God has always dealt with spiritual fire. Fire represents purity and holiness. No germ ever lived in a fire. No fly ever lived in a fire. No human being has ever lived through a fire. If you just stay there, you'll be cooked. It eliminates everything, especially impurities. Let me say something about God. God, the Bible says, out of Hebrews 12, 29, is a consuming fire. On Mount Sinai, which they got it wrong, they got this mountain. They said, this is Mount Sinai. It's not it. It's the wrong one. Let me tell you the real mountain. It's in Saudi Arabia. And guess what? That mountain is chained up because the, the faith of that place doesn't want the Christians to see it. But we've got people that actually seen it, photographed it. It's nothing but molten rock. Just charred the whole thing. Where'd that come from? The Bible tells what happened. It said God has the physical visitation of the children of Israel. And he showed up as a giant fire that sat day and night on top of that mountain for over 40 days. Well, did they build a big bonfire? Did they haul up wood? No. God don't need no matches. He's a fire all by himself. God's not sitting there going... Help me, Gabriel. We've got to get this thing going. No, God doesn't operate that way. It's spiritual fire. It came out of nowhere. It came from heaven. Shoo! That fire was so holy, he said, don't get near this fire. You get anywhere near this fire, you'll die. But we see the Bible full of this fire. We see Moses made the first sacrifice on the altar in front of the tabernacle, which you were instructed by God to create. When he made the first altar, uh, the sacrifice, he stood back. And here's what the word said. Fire came out of heaven 
and fell on that sacrifice and burned it up. And then God told them, don't ever let this fire go out. You stoke this fire. It's the, it's a word from God. The fire he gives you, you got to maintain it. You've got to stoke it. Now watch this. The second one was we have Elijah in the time of the judges. Mount Carmel. In 1 Kings 18, I believe it's 24, he said, our God is the God that answers by fire. When he called on God, the fire, again, fell right out of heaven, right on that altar. Consumed the sacrifice. You go a little further down the line, there's King David. King David had committed a sin. He numbered the, numbered the people of Israel. They're over a million people strong. Why was it a sin? Because now he can lean on the arm of the flesh. He had one of the biggest armies in the whole region. That displeased God. So he gave him a choice. And he chose three days of plague that would wipe out Israel. 75,000 people died because of that plague. And the plague was still rampant. And the, and the angel with the sword who's going to take out Jerusalem, God said, run to Onan's threshing floor, build an altar, <clears throat> and offer a sacrifice. He built the altar. He put the sacrifice. And again, it says in the word, fire came out of heaven and fell on that sacrifice. Then we go to Solomon. Solomon came along. And Solomon, at the end of constructing the whole temple, put the altar, he put all the sacrifices, and when he had, as soon as he, he had finished that, fire came out of heaven, consumed the sacrifice. There's something common about the fire. It needs a sacrifice. Let me just say to you, people want the fire, but they don't want to change. They don't leave anything on the altar. You know what? God wants everything on the altar. Give him a reason for the fire to fall. It falls on a sacrifice. You know, people look at Daniel the toy. I just got on his Facebook, no, on the Instagram, on, on uh, WhatsApp. He had shots of his church that he's in right now. One of the largest churches in South Africa for a week. He's 23. Place is packed. He just came from Zambia. We got the stats. 98,000 souls saved in four days. You know, uh, let me say this. I want to say this. Because I was raised in Africa as a missionary's kid. We've never seen these kind of harvests. These harvests, David Livingston, when he went through Malawi, he was in Blantyre. He said, we operate by the light we see. We sow tears. Very few come to Christ. But he says, we'll have others come after us. And from the work that we began and the tears that we've sowed, they'll reap the greater harvest. So I'm very much aware when we're looking at those massive crowds and 98,000 people have gone before. Paid the way, sowed the seed, so we could have that happen. But the point about Daniel DeToy is this. There's a lot of things people don't know about him, which I won't disclose everything. But when he was with Rodney Howard Brown for 12 days in Cape Town, that's his hometown. It was a hard place to get to, a lot of traffic. But every day he was there, he was there on the front row. He was there hungry, and he would get prayed for. He said, the second to last day, I got so hungry for fire. At least two nights, he like he stayed up all night. He said, God, I want the fire. I want the fire that I can shake the nations. Because let me tell you something. Until you catch fire, you'll never set your world on fire. You must catch the fire. And I won't go through the details. But he had a visitation. The tangible fire of God invaded his life. And so when he goes to these places, people are not going for the homiletical correct three-point sermon. Amen. They're going for one thing. 
The fire. That fire brought miracles after miracles. Anyone that went there, you can't go back. When you're seeing twisted girls all in a knot and they all untwist and stand and run, you're forever changed. When you see people that are born blind all their life and their eyes pop up, you're forever changed. When you see cripples, that ever, I mean the most spectacular miracles in front of your eyes. What brought that about? Fire! In these last days of great darkness, we got to quit playing church. Understand. Listen to me well. The greatest sacrifice the world has ever seen has been Jesus Christ when he laid on that cross. And let me tell you what happened 50 days after that. The Bible says he sent his fire down on those disciples. Their sacrifice was given. It was Jesus. And therefore God says, I'm sending the fire down. My holy fire. Baptize you in the liquid fire of my spirit. And it's the only thing that's going to make the difference in the world we live in today. It's got to be demonstrations of the fire of God. The power of God. I'm going to bring in a man here very soon. His name is Leif. Leif. Hetland. That guy's amazing. He's 34 years working with the highest of the high in the Islamic world. He's friends with the Taliban heads, the grand imam of the head of all the Islamic people in Pakistan. And God's given him great inroads. You know what opens the door for him? The fire! He said, I'll get with the head imam. And all of a sudden, poof, he sits with the glory. He starts shaking. He says, what is this? It's the power of God. They bring their children, broken, sick, fire, instantly healed. That's how he got to the top. Everywhere on the line, he just got healing, 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 healing. I mean, oh, the fire can open doors. You see, this gospel must be touched with fire. The book of Acts is the book of Acts of the people touched with the fire. You know, when they were arguing in front of the Sanhedrin, they said, it says in the Bible, they noted these were ordinary men. I mean, these weren't skilled. These weren't trained. These weren't anybody noble. They're just fishermen, tradesmen, carpenters. Jesus was a carpenter. Yet they made note. They'd been with Jesus. When you hang with Jesus... And you really press in for him. Fire will come on you. Now the religious people don't understand what I'm talking about. If you're here and you've got a religious spirit, right now you're going, Myrtle? It's time to leave. First of all, it's gone way too long. When we started this church, we had like 50 people. The fire of God hit, hit our church. We got touched with the fire. Well, how do you know it was fire? I felt it. I felt it invade our congregation. I'd be preaching half the congregation on the floor. Then I had the religious people. Uh, we, we don't approve of this. Approve of what? Why are these people on the floor? Because they can't stand up. He said, well... We've never seen this before. I don't think this is proper. I said, don't you sense it? The power of God. We're leaving. I said, don't let the door hit you. Where the good Lord split you. Just bye. But I'm not shutting down. Another would leave. Another would leave. I said, you know what? I didn't ask this job anyway. Everybody leave. I'll just go something else. 
I mean, I didn't want this job. He, he told me to do this job, but I'm not backing off the fire. I'm not backing off. When I hit mother load, you know, you can be normal like someone else. You can just see, you dressed in a suit. You seem normal. It's like you get two wires, two couple wires. They look the same. One's got 440, the other's got nothing. You look at those wires, you say, I don't see the difference. It's like human beings. I don't see the difference. Until you touch the wire. <laughs> then you feel the difference. Until you touch the wire. And when you get touched with the fire, if someone touches you, they're going to be touched. You understand that? They're going to be touched. It's, it's, it's like the tangible presence of the Holy God. See, Jesus is not always meek and mild like you think he is. That's your version from kindergarten, from denominational. People put plastic Jesus on their dashboards. Remember that? I don't care if it rains or freezes as long as I got my plastic Jesus. Are you serious? That's like a charm. In the book of Revelation, chapter 1, verse 14, it describes Jesus. John saw Jesus. He said his hair was glowing with white. His face was white. I mean, like, not this white. I mean, super white. Because I believe Jesus is from the Middle East, so he's, he has color. Amen. 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 So don't, whatever. And it says his eyes were like flames of fire. Now, let me tell you what. I've seen my wife's eyes. You get someone gets upset, you know, say you're talking, all of a sudden you look over, ooh. You know what I'm, does anybody know what I'm talking about? You know, like, whoa, back away from the door. <laughs> Leave the room. But what happens is because you, what you're seeing there, now it may not be righteous, but, 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 but you see that fire. You know something's about to happen. You know what I'm talking about? But Jesus is a righteous Jesus. Jesus' fire. You know what fire represents? It, it, it translates to passion or zeal. Zeal is a strong energy, strong enthusiasm for a pursuit after a cause. Passion is that energy, that fire, that, that is like this drive in you to, to see this thing happen. Zeal. Jesus, the Bible said in that same passage of first, uh, uh, Revelations 1, it said his countenance was brighter than the full strength of the sun. You ever try to look in the sun? Don't do it. The sun is bright. What is he saying? The God we serve. He has to express it in a way that we understand but he is fire. He is holy. He is pure. If there's one attribute of God that's lauded more than any other is the fact that he's holy. He has four creatures around him saying constantly all the time, and it's not to remind him. It's because who, that's who he is. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God of hosts. Holy, but he's a fire. But listen what happens to stop the fire. Sin. Sin is the arch enemy of fire. And we live in a world where we give sins a pass. Especially in the church. Well, the Lord understands. We sing this ungodly song. I'm only human. That's a terrible song. That's not a song of the redeemed. That's a song of the lost. It's the truth. Let's look at Jesus' life. We look at Jesus, John 2, 14 through 17. He came into Jerusalem. He came into the temple. You know the story. He saw the money changers. He saw those who sold birds and, and, and animals that they were needed to be slaughtered. And it ticked him off because they shouldn't have been there. 
The Bible says he made a whip. What do you do with a whip? You beat people. I've not made a whip yet. He made a whip. He turned over the money changers. Can you imagine the racket hidden on that stone floor? Can you imagine the squawks? He's kicking over everything. He's making, he is, here's what he's, he's doing. He's driving out the evil from the house of God. He didn't say, well, you know, whatever. No, he said, something's got to be done with this. I'm not sitting here doing this. And in verse 17, the disciples actually quoted, or remember from Psalm 69, 9. The zeal for my house, for your house, has eaten me up. I mean, it's the zeal. Is, I mean, I'm consumed with making it right. And I'm going to do something about it. And that's where we need to treat sin. We treat strife. We treat backbiting, gossip. We treat, I want to get into this. We treat sexual, we you have sexual, we, we don't say fornication anymore. Uh, that's why I love that, the, the testimony, Antel. I'm a fornicator. <laughs> At least someone finally admits. But we have stuff going on. That's not right. Jesus, I'll, I'll tell you what, great fire is coming to the church, but he's going to judge it. I, I listened to the prophet of God, Ted Shulsworth, and he said, I saw in a vision a row of some of the leading pastors internationally. And Jesus told him, I'm judging them. He said, I saw them. I could see their face. There was one, there was two. I could see, but I'm not telling you who they are, but I know what they do. And I'm judging that one because he's homosexual. You don't want to know what I know. I'm judging this one because his life's not straight sexually. I'm judging this one because of money. You don't think Jesus is the head of the church? He is the head. And he can take care of business. Ask Ananias and Sapphira. But we're stepping into the days of the fire of God. You get out of line because God cannot have the pollution in the house. And we get a pass. We need to have the same attitude that Jesus did against sin. It says it in Hebrews 1, 8, and 9. It says that he will rule with a scepter of righteousness. That is symbolic of your authority. But let me explain something to you. The only way you rule the demons in your life, you must live a righteous life. Well, no, I'm forgiven by the Lord and his righteousness, my righteousness. This is true. But if you don't preach the balance of the word, it'll get distorted. Amen. Yes, you're the righteousness of God in Jesus Christ. But he fully expects you to take the power and the grace he gave you to put the flesh on the cross and take it out every day. He expects you to eventually, may you not do it overnight, but he wants that anger problem out. He wants that lust problem out. He wants, listen to me, you got to understand, Jesus put it this way, he who commits sin is a slave of sin, period, full stop. Christian, non-Christian. John 8, 24. But then the next verse we never preach. John 8, 25. He, if you're going to, if you're going to just keep on being a slave, don't think that you're going to inherit the family. Meaning that get your junk together. You cannot live any way you want to as a Christian and expect you're going to make heaven. It won't happen. I have to tell you the truth. Many people in pulpits in America totally lie. They lie. And I've had it up to here. Homosexual relationships within the church, God says, no, God will root it out. Adultery, fornication in church is wrong. God will root it out. Let me tell you something. The only sex God blesses is between a husband and a wife under covenant. You got that? That's the only blessing. Any sex outside of that has a curse, including sex with yourself. 
someone's got to say. You cannot watch whatever you want to watch. Have sex with yourself and say, God's going to bless you. No, the fire will leave you. I'm trying. I have to be so blunt because I come up to thinking people can figure this. No, they can't figure a thing out. They'll take whatever gap you give them, if you don't mind if I do. <laughs> Romans chapter, you still with me? Don't go home now. <laughs> First I get people to get up and leave. I love it when people get up and leave. Oh, I'm preaching the word now. It's not to pet you. It's to slap you in reality. Right. <laughs> Wake up. <laughs> Wake up again. But this is good for you. Romans 12. Has everybody found it yet? Yep. You beat me. Let's go to Romans, uh, actually Romans 13. Let's go to verse uh, 11. Just expose it a little bit here. And, say, and do this knowing that the time that now is, is, it, is, it, is it, it is high time. Meaning that Jesus is coming sooner. If he wrote this 2,000 years ago, how much sooner is it today? To wake out of sleep. For now our salvation. Oops. For now our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Therefore, now get these words. Let us cast off the works of darkness. And let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk properly as in the day. Not in reverie and drunkenness. Now look up here a minute. What about drunkenness? First of all, how do you get drunk? Just think. How do you get drunk? I didn't mean to get drunk. It's a sin. God looks at drunkenness as a sin. If you keep drinking, I feel a little happy. You're in darkness. You're in sin. Drunkenness is sin. Getting on high on marriage you want is sin. Getting high on any opioid pills is sin. Listen to me. Anything that causes you to lose control is demon inspired because you will as Beth Ann just said, she picked up a passenger. You get drunk, you'll pick up passengers. Let me say this to you. We have Celebrate Recovery for 10 years. People getting off all kind of addictions, mainly alcohol. The thing about alcoholism is this. It's very deceptive. I'm just a social drinker. Let me test you. Don't touch one drop of alcohol for two years. Can you do it? I can do it. Show me. I'm not saying we chase each other down and form the police. I don't want that. Religion goes nuts on this. Jesus did make wine. Paul told Timothy to drink a little wine for his stomach's sake. It couldn't have been Kool-Aid. Wouldn't have done nothing. Do you understand that? So I want to be very careful where I come to the line. But let me just say something to you. Based on the promiscuity of our age... Based on 1 Corinthians 8. What's 1 Corinthians 8? Well, Paul went on to say, if you go to the market and get buy meat offered to idols and it doesn't affect your conscience, that's okay for you. But for others, if they know that meat was offered to idols, if they took it home, it would affect their conscience. So when you buy the meat and you eat it and you invite them to your dinner, you say, by the way, this is offered to the idol." It's going to hurt his conscience. And anything that hurts your conscience means it's sin. Therefore, you are bringing condemnation onto your life. So he said, wouldn't it be better if you just didn't eat the meat offered to idols for the cause of protecting your other brother and sister? Can I perhaps suggest something? 
that you're very much careful with what you do with your beer and your wine and your hard liquor. Because people watch you. Your kids watch you. You may be in a restaurant and when you're chugging down a giant stein of beer, some kid is looking, what are you doing? Is that Kool-Aid? No, son. Just get away from the table. <laughs> I remember Manova Hayes. He was staying around a pool. Poor, I don't always love to hang around pools. For, that's how he relax. He was with an evangelist. He had a little two-year-old son with diapers on. And that son was trained by his daddy. And so the people drinking all around the pool. This little kid with this bottle over there. We take the guy's drink and just smack it out of his hand. <laughs> he says, Jesus doesn't want you drinking that stinking stuff. And he just wanted to be, and he go to the next one. <laughs> Jesus doesn't want you drinking that. And what's so cool? Well, who's going to stop the T-roll with, with diapers? <laughs> You're just going to leave him alone. But yet he had a message. Let me tell you what. The Bible says stay far from the door of temptation. So you have to be the judge. Does that make sense? I'll leave the judgment with you. Paul did. It's on you. But don't play. At the gates of hell. All I'm going to say. Thank you. It's just, it has to be said. Okay then, okay let's see. Let's see what else they have to say. I did not, by the way, I did not write this. Jesus said these words. This is by the Holy Ghost. He said, um, let us not, let, let us walk properly in the day, not in revelry and drunkenness. Ooh, nor in lewdness and lust. That word is sensuality. Lewdness. <clears throat> Ladies, beware how you dress. Let me say this to you. You know, we thank God for the machines they have in the grocery store. They can vacuum pack chicken and other things. But we do not need you vacuum packed. And I, I'm just saying. And I, literally, in, in, in certain cultures, I mean, cultures are different. But some cultures need to get redeemed. Can't more. But I mean, they got very beautiful women. And when I go like to certain countries, especially in South America... When I do an altar call, I have to do this. In the name of Jesus. In the name. In my mind, I want to say, get some clothes on, girl. What's up? Please wear a sweater. How about, how about a sweatshirt? But I want to just say this. He says, I don't want you messing with any kind of things that, that, that is inappropriate. Amen. Now, you can go legalistic on anything I'm talking about, but that's on you. I've not made the rules. I've just said what Scripture says. But understand that people are committing sin in so many areas. Because what happens if provocativeness, like a guy, if you're not married, you should not be hanging with another single woman. But I'm just, we're friends. How stupid can you be and still breathe? Affairs always begin with emotional connections. You got to be careful. Some people you, you can connect with real quick. You just connect. You got to, you feel it. There's a connection. Beware. You don't get close to that person. You never get alone. You got to understand. Because, you know, Jack Hayford, I loved his honesty. He said, I was barely married a year, and I'm working at the central office of the Four Square Church. Jack Hayford is like, was the leader of Four Square for years. He's in his 90s. Holy man. He said, I'm working with this pretty girl, and we're just friends. We're cutting up. We're just friends. And over the months, I started kind of liking her. Because everything she liked, I liked. And we were in the same. We kind of like float. And I felt it. I felt my heart shift towards her. And all of a sudden, I realized, I'm emotionally attached to this girl. What am I going to do? You know what he said? I resigned. I left my position. 
I told my wife, I'm getting attached to this girl because he said, I knew where it was going. But I'm chopping it off now. You see, Jesus has some drastic things to say. He said, if anyone looks at a woman with lust, they've committed adultery. Well, I didn't even do the act. Too bad. In heaven, it counts. And has the answer. Now, these answers are radical. Again, I'm just the messenger. He said, put your hand on a stump and take an axe and chop it off if it offends you. Pluck out your eye if it causes you to wander. Chop off your foot. He says, listen, you got to understand what you're dealing with is deadly. The Bible says the wages of sin is death. What is death? Separation from God. You have to pay wages for sin. Everything that's a sin in your life pushes you from God. You do anger outbursts. Do you feel the presence of God in you? No. It's a flesh attack. When, you, when you're looking at something you shouldn't be looking at, do you feel the presence of God? No. You feel distance. And literally, you can com- 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 commit sin, commit sin, and you're, you will pay for it with a separation. S- hell will suck you away. Well, how do I break it? Repent! Call it what it is. A sin. Call that I've been lusting. I've been drunk. I've been, I've been whatever I've been doing. It. Tell it like it is. Quit calling it other names. And then if you need to, on a major sin, you go to someone and confess it. I said, I've got to tell you where I'm, what I'm, especially men with sexual sins, you need someone you can talk to. Don't hide it. This is the trouble with the sin. Everyone hides it in the dark. I don't want anybody to know. I'm keeping it all hidden. It's just me. I work it out with the Lord. The devil loves that stuff. No, he says, expose it. Put it in the light. Let people know. Make yourself accountable. Repent. And he said, the light of God will burn it out. You don't play with sin. It will take you out. Well, once saved, always saved. Don't believe it. It's not in the Bible. You have got to treat sin like Jesus did. You cannot rule in this life unless you walk righteously. Does that make sense? And he said he hated sin, but he loved righteousness. You got to like say, I hate anything that comes up in you that said, like a little jealous spirit for that person, uh, uh, it did this. You stop it out. You start giving gifts and you start praying. You don't, does that make sense? You don't tolerate anything that's of the dark side. Nothing. Amen. Because that fire will be snuffed out. And you got to understand that fire in you is precious. It came from God. And God wants to make it grow bigger and bigger and bigger. He wants that anointing. Now, here's the deal about taking out sin. Scripture is so clear. Romans 6, 14 says, sin shall not dominate you. That's a word from God. Well, you don't understand, Pastor. I just, I just, I just can't, I just, I just can't, I just keep. And I understand the pull, the pressure. We're here to help you. It doesn't happen overnight. But let me tell you what. The Bible says, if you go to verse 12 and 13 of Romans 6, it has some things to say. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body. See, that's a choice. Because if you let it reign, then you're the slave and it's the master. When you're raised, where well, you were made to be a king. Are you with me? That's your base lust. Now, here's the key scripture, verse 13. Do not present your members as instruments of unrighteousness. Uh, what's he talking about? Don't present, don't yield. Like, don't allow. What's a, what instrument is he talking about? By the way, the word instrument in the Greek means weapon. Your eye can be your own enemy. You start seeing this. Job, I think it's 32 or 33, verse 1. He said, I made a covenant with my eyes, not a sin against a maid. I was in Brazil. I love Brazil. I love their food, love their people. But my God, I'm driving around Sao Paulo. I don't know what were they advertising. I never, I never could figure it out. I didn't want to look. But they had giant billboards of this beautiful naked woman laying out. Gigantic. You could never look up. I mean, I, I didn't go, let me check it out what the ad is. Forget it. You don't want to know what the ad is. I'm not dumb ad. 
I would just look down all the time. Look, look down. Come on, man. I want to be honest. Can we be honest? Oh, man, I'd, I'd be cool, but you can do stuff on the slide. On the slide. You're driving down the road. Here comes a woman jogging. You watch her jog by you. And as she passes your peripheral vision, you decide it's time to adjust your rear view mirrors. <laughs> no one would know it, but you know it. You know it, you know it, you know it. And so you gotta, this can be, this eye can be a weapon against you. So you gotta say, no, I, you're not watching stuff. You're not taking, no second looks. You gotta look down, no, no, in Jesus' name. If a thought comes to you, spit it out. Your ear can be a weapon against you. Your feet and hands can take you places you shouldn't be going. Don't tell me you're trying to evangelize outside of Cheetah 3. I've had people come to tell me, yeah, I'm just checking the club out. I don't want to be doing anything. I'm just going to be, it's just I need some fellowship. But you lie like a rug. This, I mean, listen to me. And then people tell me, I don't know what happened. How we ended up that night. I don't know what happened. Sin is very, very, very costly. We have lost people because they covered their sin. Because at a facade, you yield not your members to sin. Who do you yield them to? You yield them to God, spirit. You yield them to the fire. How do I do that? You get in meetings like this, you say, Lord, talk to me. You yield your eyes to hear the word. You yield your spirit, man. You, I mean, you yield your members. Let your Bible be held by your hands. Let your eyes see. Let your ears hear. You, now you become a weapon of righteousness. Let me tell you about sin. If you run over it long enough, you'll kill it. Don't say, no, I can't get No, no I, I promise you. You can run over it. But you can never assume I got it made. No. You better be on guard. You better listen to me. This is what the rest of the scripture says. I, I, okay. We got all the time we need, guys. Just relax. But I'm going to wrap it up. It says, not in strife and envy. But put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision. Everybody say, make no provision. Make no provision for the flesh to fulfill its lust. Listen to me. It becomes you got to make choices. It's very serious. The sexual gate is the number one gate demons come in and pollute everything. You got to make a stand for righteousness in Jesus' name. And we will embrace every sinner. We will embrace every backslider. We're not here to exclude anybody. We're here to help people. But once you get the message and understand what it's about, it's about the fire of God. And when he anointed those disciples with the fire of God, they became men from another world. They said men have turned the world upside down and have come here also. That's how they looked at them. They, these men walk with the fire of heaven upon them. And let me tell you what fire does. It'll purify you. You get the anointing on you, the more it touches you, it'll sensitize you to sin. It'll make you so sensitive, like a slightest word that you say, correct that, make that right. I mean, I mean, you are so far away from some of the obvious sins that, no, no, I don't want to go anywhere where I'm going to, where, where I'm going to quench this fire. In fact, I want to do the opposite. I want to feed the flame. Yeah. And the gospel message is characterized by the fire that's on it. And in these last days, God wants you to be a weapon against darkness. And how you become a weapon of darkness? You become a, a weapon of fire of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Yes, he wants your sacrifice. But you know what? We don't get this through works. I have to turn to Jesus. He's my ultimate sacrifice. It's really faith in him. It's faith in his sacrifice that I can receive the fire. 
It's faith in his sacrifice. I can receive the forgiveness and cleansing and receive the fire. It doesn't take long to get right. You're just going to make it right there in your seat. You can make a decision. I repent of what I'm doing. I'm not going there again. I'm changing my heart. I let the blood of Jesus wash over me. Now, Lord, fill me with the fire. It's that quick. You don't have to wait around for weeks of time. You can do it today. Today. God wants to send a fire today. And these 10 days of the fire of God, the holy days of fire, days of holy fire. I want to burn out every tendency that's, that, that darkness offers you. And the only thing that you have is a hunger and a passion and a zeal for the things of God. And you've got no time for anything else. That's good preaching, by the way. Got no time for TV, click, Facebook, buy, TikTok, sayonara. Just go down the line. I mean, there's way too much time. You see, because what he's saying is, I've got to get the fire. I've got to get the fire. I'm telling you, the fire will give you stuff, like a truck. I mean, the fire will just, the fire, the fire of God, because I've known him for 20 years, and I met him about a year ago on the streets, randomly. It wasn't random, it was a divine thing. I said, you're going to be back in church. I know his past. But in this house, we're going to walk in love. We're going to be full of grace, but we will not tolerate sin. Does that make sense? We will not tolerate. Not tolerate. Not tolerate. In Jesus' name. If you're living together, it'd be great. Get saved. Get right. I'll give you some time. But after a while, you and I are going to have a come to Jesus meeting. And you're going to split the sheets or get married. I've done it many times. People say, we don't want to split the sheets. Then you're getting married right now. Really? Yep. Married him. Went off to live a happy life. You do that kind of thing, you might sure beat sinning. Amen? So bow your heads with me. Father, I thank you today that without the fire, we cannot do what we're called to do. Without the fire of heaven, we'll never be able to run with this race looking to Jesus. Lord, you told us to let go of every weight and get out every sin out of our life. Lord, it says in our 1 Thessalonians 4, 3, this is the will of God, even our sanctification. They would abstain from fleshly lusts. The Lord, you told us to put off the old man and put on the new. You've told us to do some things, God, but we've got to want your fire. Lord, we want to yield this, next, this whole month to the fire of God. God, burn out everything that needs to get out. Burn out religion. Burn out fear of man. Burn out the lust for things that are not, in, uh, that are not ordered of God. We don't want to displease you, Father. We want to please you in all we do and all we say. We want to live it out. That we can have dominion over sin. Dominion. Dominion. We're no longer slaves. But we're masters. We... We discipline our body. We bring it under. We subject it to our spirit man. For to be spiritually minded is life and peace, but to be carnally minded is death. We want to be spiritually minded. If you're here today and you say, you know, God, I've got to give my life to you in a complete manner because I've allowed the sins of this world to push me away from you. And I say about church, there's no one better than anybody else that's level ground at the cross. Everybody comes the same way. Through the blood of the cross, through the mercy of Jesus, we just receive his mercy and begin to apply his power. I just want to let you know that. So we understand it's all Jesus. But you're here today and you know sins have crept in your life. And you feel further and further away from God. But you can come to Christ just as you are with a repentive heart where, you, where you're sorry for what you're doing. You don't, you're not happy about it. You're sorry. You need to have repentance in your heart to make this prayer work. But you come to God and say, God, I want to be back with you. I want that sweet fellowship I once knew. And he'll restore you. I mean just that quickly. So if you're here today, you don't have peace with God, you're not right with God, if that's you, but you want to be made right, I want to pray for you right in your seat. 
Slip your hand up and say, Pastor, pray for me. I want to be made right with God. Thank you for that hand. Thank you for that hand. Anybody else? A hand over there. Thank you for that hand. Anybody else in, in the balcony? Anybody else? Thank you for that hand. Thank you for that hand. Anybody else? Thank you for that hand. I see it over there. Now listen, I'm going to ask you to do this. Every head bowed, every eye closed, no one looking around. But you raise your hand. It's before God you did that. I want to pray for you. I want to do exactly what I said. I want to pray for you right where you are. But I'd like you to do one action of faith. Stand to your feet. Just stand where you are. That's all I'm going to ask you to do. Just stand everywhere where you are. Just stand. Lift your hands up. Just stand. It's a beautiful fact. Just stand. If you came with a friend, stand with your friend. You stand up. Stand with them. Now, Father, you see each one standing here today. You love them with a love that's without measure. How deeply you love them. And how you, you don't condemn them. You didn't come to condemn us. You came to save us. And neither do we condemn them. Lord, we're all learners. There are no failures. We're learning how to walk this out. So I pray for each one standing. I break every power of hell arrayed against their life. I bind you, spirits of hell and darkness, to pull them away from the very presence of God. Today is the day the power is broken and the negative cycle is stopped. In Jesus' name. Now those standing, lift your, lift your hands up and everybody pray this prayer. Those standing and those seated, pray this prayer. Oh God, oh God. I, need I need your help. I have sinned. But today, I turn my back on all sin. I repent of my sin. Jesus, invade my space. Come into my heart. Be my Lord. Be my master. And I receive your forgiveness. You are the Son of God. You died for me. You rose again for me. And I believe now. You've come into my life. You're restoring my fellowship. Send your fire into my life. Burn out the things of the flesh, the things of the world, and fill me with a holy passion for the Word of God and for the house of God. I love you, Father. I love you, Jesus. I'm born again. I'm made right with God. My sins are forgiven. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Let's all stand up, shall we? I want you to do this. I did the first service. The power of God just showed up so powerfully. He's here. He's here. Tonight we're going to be praying for people. We may pray for some this morning, but tonight we'll, this will be a different kind of flow. I have different ministers of the gospel ministering. I got my wife ministering one night. I got Pastor Willie. We just got different people. I might bring in some guests, but we're just going to be, it's going to be mainly an in-house thing. But I want to say this. The more you allow your body to come into the line of the Holy Ghost anointing and your mind, your spirit, the greater will be the fire that will be released in your life. And some of those struggles that you're having are going to be burned up in the fire. And replaced with Holy Ghost joy. <laughs> so Lord, I pray. Lift your hands up. Lord, I pray for the fire of God in every person here today. Let your fire fall on each one. Let it be released to burn out everything that robs them of the joy of the Lord. Let it break every band of hell. Let it heal every broken heart. Let it set every captive free by the holy fire that falls from a holy God. Father, let your fire fall. Let your fire fall. In the mighty name of Jesus, fill us up this day to overflowing with the holy fire of heaven. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. He's doing things right now. He's doing things. I feel him so strong. He's moving in your life. He's moving for you. In the name of Jesus. 
Ben and Solo, Solo, let, raise your one hand. Both of you, hold, hold up. In the name of Jesus, by the anointing of the Holy Ghost, your days of strife and sorrow are over. In the name of Jesus, we break the demonic attack and we release the angelic host and the anointing of God. And God's going to lift you to a place of peace. It's by the anointing of God. It's a gift from heaven. It's a gift from heaven. I prophesy you have a family where heaven resides. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Sherry and Will, raise your hand. I'll tell you what, you two, in Jesus' name, you're stepping into the fire. You're letting go of religion. You're letting go of everything that's been like the shallow waters of the anointing. But you're stepping into the deep. And I hear the Lord say, don't back off. Do not listen to friends. Do not listen to family members that have not experienced what you've experienced. Let you be the catalyst of change for your whole family. Keep moving into Jesus. Keep receiving the fire. And the anointing of God shall destroy every yoke in your house. I just see it being broken. And what the devil did against your daughter was a counterattack to stop you. But God broke it. And it's not done yet. He's going to fill your fire with every one of your children. In Jesus' name. George. What's this? Lana. Hallelujah. Come here. Bring your family. Yeah, next one. Over. Next one over. Oh, Chip, you want prayer? Come forward. Oh, that, that. Lana. Come on. Lorna, not Lana. Lorna. Not Lana. I'm, 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 Lorna, I'm sorry. Good to meet you. Welcome. Good to meet you. Now listen, I, 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 I just know this. You've gone through a lot. But you're on the upside. It's changing. And God's been hearing your prayer. You've been praying for yourself, your family. Particularly for this man. Are you a new friend? You're getting married? You want to do it right now? That's a joke. That's a joke. I'm so... I was actually... You want me to marry you? Yeah. Let me tell you what. Because of you and your dad. Your dad was a blessing to this house. We'll make room to do that. How about that? Lorna, I know you, Lorna. For some reason, I was getting locked up. I said, begin with an L. I just made up the rest. Lord, I just prayed the fire. Raise your hand. I think the Lord's going to redeem what the devil has stolen. He's going to restore what has been removed. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, let the fire of heaven come upon them. Heal every broken heart. Set them free. And let your fire bless their life. Let their fire fill them with your glory. In Jesus' name. Woo. You feel that? I feel it going in you. Lorna, fire! <laughs> uh, why do they fall down? Because they can't stand up, okay? Beth Ann, acceleration for your life. Raise your hands. Supernatural acceleration. A year from now, you won't even recognize your life. A year from now, you'll be flowing in your gifts and callings. God is a restorer. He is so good.
Sarah, good to see you. Are you friends with her? Is your friend? for a ride <laughs> just it's more like the uh, let me give you some instructions uh, it's like when you ride the uh, roller coaster at Six Flags both hands up in the air <laughs> come Lord just touch him touch him touch him touch him coming together. I've been asking God for this or that. You know, things are coming together for you. You love God. God's going to use you in an unprecedented way. He has a great adventure if you dare to take the step. He's got great things in store. I feel the presence so powerful. Jordan, you're going to be catapulted. Come here. You're going to be catapulted. You can go back. We love you. Come here, big guy. God's raising up. I want to focus on young people. Some, pay, some people get saved, and that's wonderful. You go to heaven. But when you're young, you're saved, and you have a life, a whole life, which is something to give to God. But you are going to, I'm telling you, if you allow the Lord to do this, He wants to just put your focus like a laser. And the Lord said, just remove every distraction from your life that doesn't add more of me to you. And as you focus on me, the fire of heaven is going to come on you. And the hand of heaven He's going to anoint you for great things. So stay yielded. Stay in the presence. Stay under the fire of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name. There's a young champion for God. Watch what happens. You know, I hope you don't mind me sharing this. He came to me in the encounter. He said, I just want to ask you forgiveness. I was a son early, long ago, but I left the house. But I repent. I want to come back to the house. And I want to fulfill what God put in me to do. Welcome back, son. Welcome back. You know, wonderful. You sense that anointing? And I feel so strong. That's the smartest thing you could have done is come to church and announce to me at the altar when I get married. <laughs> you know it's going to be blessed. I'm sure, Lorna, I think John's watching from heaven with a big smile. Don't you think so? Oh, man, this is great. You don't know the half of this. But you're a miracle woman. And you're a miracle man. Okay, let's lift our hands up. Brother, Pastor, come on. Father, we just come. We're so grateful for your holy presence. We're so grateful for your holy presence. We sense the fire of God. Burning us, so, oh Lord. Dip us in the kerosene of your spirit and set us on fire so we can burn for you. Let this be a month of catching fire.
Let me just say this. I feel his power so strong. Yes. <laughs> so, here's what we're going to do. Boy, it's just getting stronger and stronger and stronger. Yes. <laughs> I think it's the truck that did it. Okay, we're just going to receive the Holy Ghost. I'm, I'm, listen to me. I, I'm, I'm just going to not even dismiss the service. Just keep playing. We'll pay you. Just keep playing. But you can leave when you want to leave. But listen, some of you need to come up to the altar. Some of you need to really get with God. Some let the fire of God come on you. You got that? You just need to just, don't rush out, you know, well, what about lunch? Well, maybe you don't eat till later. <laughs> Boy, I, I just want to respect, he's just falling, falling, falling. He did on the first service, but the first service, I got to get the room for the second service. We were late. I just had to shove it off because we had a second service. But we don't have a second service until, we have a third service, by the way tonight at 7 but that fire just keeps growing just keeps growing it's going to flow with the Holy Ghost here's what, here's, here's what you're going to do if you've got a child as the Lord leads you're going to slip out the back jack and you're going to go slide out get your kid bring him back we'll pray for the child but you can come up here and uh, I need, where's Kevin Dalton? All right, Kevin. We're going to go in the flow mode. I just want God to touch people all over this place. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to pray a general touch. Then you can do what you want to do. Then I'm going to pray for people. Pastor Willie, if you can. Just Flossie. Pastor Linda. We just pray for people. We just got to work this out. And we'll just take our time. But you can go, you can come, it's fluid. You got that? But just respect what's going on. Don't talk here. Go outside to talk. But if you have a child, get your child. Don't leave the workers hanging. Amen? They love your munchkin, but after a while, it's, they, they need to get it. So just raise your hand. I'm just going to speak. In the name of Jesus, I speak fire on you. Receive the fire of the Holy Ghost. Receive the fire. Fire in Jesus' name. Fire. Fire. Receive the fire. More fire. More fire. Fuego mas. Fuego mas. Mas fogo. 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 In the name of Jesus, fire, fire. Ooh, I feel it stronger. Fire, 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 fire. You young men, line up. Come up here. You young men, that that row right there. Justin and women, come on. You're married. Come on. You're. Form a line right here. Quick, 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 quick. Lift your hands to heaven. In the name of Jesus. God wants to touch you with fire. Especially you. He's got to touch you. He's got to touch you. You ready? In the name. Woo, man, I feel it. So you're free to come and go. Free to pray. Free to stay. The service is officially put on whole till tonight. Amen? Fire! 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 Get him, Jesus. Fire! Fire! Get him, Jesus. 